I need it. How on earth am I going to get that? Great science line. I'll deal with you later. Stella, look at this. These fridge magnets stick really easily to the door. See, even when you hold them close to the door, the magnets pull away from your hand. Yeah, but look, if we try and stick these two magnets together, I mean, it's impossible. They bounce apart. Let me see. Hey, it feels like there's a force keeping them apart. What's going on, Stella? Why do they stick to the fridge, but not to each other? Well, I'll leave that force with you and let me go and find out more. It isn't just fridge magnets that seem to have this attractive power. Look at this. Now, 2,000 years ago, the ancient Greeks found that some stones, like this, could do strange things. They could attract each other and iron. Now, these stones were called lodestones. And they also found that if you stroked a nail or similar metal along the stone, then these strange, attractive powers could be passed on to the metal. Lots of these stones were found near a Greek town called Magnesia, so they call the lodestone's attractive force magnetism. Now, some materials are magnetic, but you can't tell just from looking at them. For example, some metals are magnetic. But many aren't. So you have to test them to find out. But what else can they do apart from make you smile when you open the fridge door? I think it's time how we investigate it. Science is sometimes slimy, often gooey, and occasionally terrifying. Thank goodness today's investigation is about magnets, because without them, I'm in serious trouble. I'm here to meet Chris, whose team used magnets to hold themselves in position as they paint ships, radar dishes and buildings the size of a football stadium. What sort of things did you have to think about when you were designing them? It has to hold a man in position on a vertical incline, and these are load-tested to 120 kgs. 120 kilograms? Now, I'm 100 kilograms, so they must be pretty strong. Yep, they certainly seem to be. In fact, these magnets are so strong that if you're not careful, you could become unstuck. Or stuck. Or un... Oh, never mind. Oh, it, it's certainly not shifting. That's incredible. But how do I get it off? Right. We've designed a lever system, which if you pull the lever up, it pushes springs on the side of the magnet, which allows you a small air gap. But that's not a very big gap. No, but it's enough because the closer you get to a metal wall or surface, the magnetic forces start to pull the magnet in and it will attract to each other. The, the further away you get from the metal face, the magnetic forces are getting weaker and you're able with your own strength to pull it away. Oh! That's it. Fantastic. So the magnetic force is strongest at the surface of the magnet. That's why the closer I bring the magnet to this iron girder, the stronger the pulling force I feel until I can't hold it anymore. But this lever can help me by pushing the magnet away from the surface so that the magnetic force is weak enough for me to pull it off by myself. And that means you can hang 50 metres above the ground at any angle. Well, actually, Chris, this doesn't feel too bad. I reckon I could do it. Have you got any oil tankers need painting? Howie. Once you can do what my lads can do over here, and you're fully trained, we might consider giving you a job. Oh, and uh, on second thoughts, um, look, Chris, no, no, don't go. Help. Oh. These six magnets are suspended. Move them closer together. Why? Well, the ends of the magnets are called poles, one the North Pole and the other the South Pole. Now bring two like poles together, both South, both North, 
and the magnetic force pushes them apart. They repel. But bring two different poles together, one north, one south, and the magnetic force pulls them together. They attract. Now, if I put this metal sheet between them, this could be your fridge door. I get it. These magnets are pushing each other apart, so they must have the same pole on each. Yeah, either both north or both south. But when you bring them near the metal door of the fridge, it doesn't matter which pole is facing the door. Both are attracted to the metal. Oh, yeah. Hey, what's that music? It's coming from Stella's cave. A magnet doesn't have to be touching whatever it's attracting, like this paper clip. The force of the magnet can be sensed all around the magnet, and this space of attraction is called the magnetic field. Now, the magnetic field is invisible to our eyes, so how do we see it? Well, these small pieces of iron are called iron filings, and they line up in the shape of the magnetic field. And where the lines are closest is where the force is strongest, at the ends of the magnet, at the poles. This is only part of the picture. Magnetic force doesn't just work in air. The iron filings have been mixed with oil. A drop in the magnet... We can see the shape of the magnetic field all around the magnet. The iron filings are closest together at the poles, and that's where the magnetic field is strongest. Further away from the magnet, the filings are wider apart, and that shows that the magnetic force decreases the further away you are from a magnet. But what is causing this? Well, it's a coil of wire attached to a battery. But is it the wire that's causing the magnetic field? With the battery connected, we can see the magnetic field. But if I disconnect the battery, the magnetic field disappears. So it must be the electrical current that's causing the magnetic field, not the wire. An electrical current causing a magnetic field? I think Howie should investigate further. Right. After gate, proceed on a bearing of 240 degrees for 100 metres. For this investigation, I'm going to need a real navigation expert. And by the sound of these directions, that's exactly what Bob Eady is. Bob uses magnets to help pilots fly all over the world. And he says, once I find him, all will be revealed. Turn due south and open door. So, Bob, how does a magnet help you fly? Well, to answer that, Howie, you need to understand that the world itself is a giant magnet with a north pole and a south pole. And the compass that you're holding is a vital piece of equipment in the aircraft, and it'd be attracted to the magnetic north at the north pole. Once you know where north is, you can work out where east and west and south is. So, magnets in compasses can tell us where we're going. But there's something lurking in every plane's cockpit that could send you seriously off course. Tally-ho, pass me the good old compass. So where's the problem? Well, Harry, the problem is in these instruments here that are all electrical, and the electrical current that goes through the cable gives off a magnetic field that deflects the compass. Well, I can't detect anything. You can't detect it because none of this is turned on. Look. Ah. Oh, yes. I see it now. So why can't we insulate against that? Well, you can insulate the cables against electricity from leaking, but you can't insulate the cables from magnetic fields. So how do you correct a compass that's pointing in the wrong direction? Well, that's easy, Howie. What we use are permanent magnets like these, and we put them around the compass to deflect the compass card back to its true position. So pull it round? That's right, yes. So let's say, for the sake of argument, nick your magnet, that um, this is an electrical cable producing a magnetic field, and it's pulling the compass round 
OK, I'll take another magnet and I'll put it on the other side and allow it to pull it back to its true heading. That's clever. But how can this translate to working on, well, an aeroplane? Well, Harry, first of all, what you've got to do is you've got to get this aeroplane and get it outside. There's too many magnetic fields in here for a start. And then we've got to let the pilot know when his plane is heading north, when his engine's running and when the current's flying through his electrical cables. And to do that, we'll use a similar compass to someone outside who will help to align the aircraft to point to north. And then the pilot will use a similar magnet and he'll correct the compass to head to north as well. So another plane's compass perfectly aligned. But with all my hard work, you'd have thought he'd at least have given me a lift home. Now my spanner's made of magnetic material, so perhaps I can think of a way to get it back. If an electric current causes a magnetic field, then I should be able to make a magnet using electricity. Oh, now, my hammer is about the same weight as my spanner, so I'll use it as a guide. Let me see. Right, it says here that I can increase the strength of the magnetic field by wrapping the wire into a coil. Well, I've done that. Magnetic field's not strong enough. You can increase the magnetic field by putting something into the coil. Plastic. That's not really effective. Uh, what about this? Iron. Now, that's better, but it's still not strong enough. Um... Now, another way to increase the strength of the magnetic field is to use more than one coil, and bringing the ends together is even better. It's certainly having some effect, but there's still room for improvement. Larger electrical current through the coils. Can't do that. Larger coils. Can do that. So, now I've got a magnet that I can switch on and off as needed, and hopefully I'll be able to get my spanner back. But while I'm setting up, I'll let Howie investigate another thought. If electric currents can produce magnetic fields, can magnetic fields produce electric currents? Now, this is an excellent place to investigate electricity. Just look! It's everywhere! But what about magnetism? I can't see any of that around. I'm going to need help. And luckily for me, somewhere here is Dr Mike Diprose, who's a real expert. you. So, what is the link between electricity and magnetism? Well, I'm just about to show you. I don't think I like this investigation anymore. We're awfully high up. What happened, then? We've just dropped 42 metres in just over two seconds. The reason we didn't crash into the ground is because of electricity and magnetism. Come on, follow me, I'll show you. Now, we already know that if we pass an electric current down a wire, it generates a magnetic field, and, in fact, the reverse is true as well, and I can show you this. If you'd like to hold the wire... Well, I get the magnet, that's right. Now, if you move that wire past the magnet, now, you should see a needle moving, can yes. you? Yes. Yeah. And that's current that's being it. generated in the wire. That's right, yeah. Now, it also works if you move the magnet past the wire. Right. It doesn't matter which is moving, one or the other, provided it's moving, you get electricity. And that's basically what's happening with the ride. As this compass shows, the carriage has lots of very strong bar magnets. And instead of a wire, the ride has seven-metre-high aluminium fins.
an electric current is generated. It's all very interesting, but what use is it? Well, what happens when you have an electric current? You get a magnetic field. Exactly, and that's how the ride works. And I can show you with this model. This red box represents the carriage. And on the side, two strong permanent magnets. Now, we take it up to the top. When I let go, <laughs> crashes straight down. Now, these pieces of metal there represent the aluminium fins. Now, this is aluminium just like on the ride? That's right, yeah. But they're not magnetic? No, but it does conduct electricity, and that's the important thing. Right. So, if we put those now on the side, now when we lift up the carriage and you let go, it slows down. Fantastic. The magnets on the side induce an electric current in the aluminium plate. And that, in turn, generates a magnetic field back to the magnet. That's right. And the two together slow the carriage down as it comes down. Well, that's all very clever, and it obviously works. But Stella's been using electricity to make magnets, so maybe they would work here as well. But why not use electromagnets? They're seriously strong. Well, imagine what would happen. You're winched up on the right to the top, you're halfway down, and there's a power cut. What happens? No power, no brakes. Exactly. Uh, no howie. No way. Do you know what? I'm getting a serious bit of respect for magnets. Right. Let's see if I can get that spanner. Contact. All I have to do is switch on the current. No, that's not magnetic. No, well, it's the wrong piece. No worries. Just switch off the current. Try again. Yep, seems to be holding. There, done it. Now I can get back to my repairs, but before I go, here's something for you to think about. This is a length of baking foil made from metal, aluminium. Now, it's not attracted by the magnet. Connect these wires, and I can pass an electric current through the foil. Now, what do you think will happen? Nothing will happen. Stella said it's made from aluminium, a metal that's not attracted by a magnet. Like the Jinx can, remember? Aha, uh -huh. the electric current will produce a magnetic field. Yeah, that should have an effect. Go on, Stella. Switch the electricity on. Look, the electric current has created a magnetic field. Yeah, it's turned the foil into a magnet as well. And the two magnetic fields are pushing or pulling against each other. It makes the foil wobble. 